Nyack, you know, it's a small town. You can walk around the streets, window shop, stop in, get a little bite to eat here. It's, it's a lovely community, it really is. I remember when he was a teenager going to high school and I'd be walking down Main Street in Nyack with Wells. And, you know, the kids walking by would say, hey, Wells, he, he was always, you know, a free spirit like that. We are probably right now about 15, 16 miles from New York City. We're headed down to the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. It's a very special place to, to be. That red bandana carries his whole story. And so I'm leaving with his name, his story, and the symbol of his story. And so to me, that, that's an important gesture of remembrance. We used to take our children to Sunday school when they were very little. And my husband was getting Wells dressed for church one day. He had a little Eton suit on, and my husband took a um, white, little white handkerchief and folded it up and put, put it in Wells' breast pocket and said, now Wells, that's for show. And I hand him this red bandana, it was just folded up quarters or whatever. I said, we put this in your back pocket. I said, that's for blow, when you gotta blow your nose. That's what he continued to do all through his life. He used that red bandana for messy jobs. He used them when he played sports. Uh, he just always had it with him. It was just a natural part of getting dressed in the morning. Wells was a very good athlete. Wells played lots of different sports, started baseball and Pop Warner football. Wells was very gifted. Uh, in hockey and lacrosse seemed to be a natural pickup for him. Ultimately going on to college he knew he wanted to play Division I so he figured uh, lacrosse would be his his goal. He enjoyed being a part of the BC lacrosse team immensely and earned you know a starting position eventually. He called me up and said dad being a varsity athlete at Boston College is the greatest thing in the world. They take such good care of us. They really, truly do. He said, I just love it here. And that was when he was a freshman. It only got better from there on. Well started out at Sandler as a research assistant. 104th floor, South Tower. And he loved it up there. I'll never forget, he called me one day, it was pouring out. He said, Dad, what's it doing where you are? I said, it's pouring. He said, where I am up here, sun's out. I'm looking down at the clouds. This is so beautiful here, I love this building. And he really did, he loved being in the World Trade Center. It was Labor Day weekend of 2001. And Wells came home for the weekend. Right before I, he got in the car with me and I was going to take him to go back into the city, he just stopped and I turned to look and he said, you know, Mom, I don't know what it is, he said, but I do know this much. I know I'm meant to be part of something really, really big. And those were basically the last words he said here in his home before we left. We were in New York City with him that Sunday before 9-11. He took his red bandana out of his pocket and had a, he always kept his comb wrapped in the bandana, just as I do with the blue one. Allison said, you still carrying that red bandana? And he said, absolutely, Mom, I'll always carry this red bandana. Oh, oh. 
While I was home here, I got a phone call. I answered it. It was my older brother from Virginia. Well, turn on your TV. And, you know, there are helicopters up in the sky, live video feeds and so forth. And I said, oh, God, Wells is down there. So I spent the next probably half an hour trying to get in touch with my brother. He called my office. He spoke with a woman who was my assistant. So his next call was to his mother. Mom, this is Wells. I, I want you to know that I'm okay. And his voice was steady. I could hear some tension. And as I'm watching, the second plane comes flying in and slams into the South Tower. Oh, Lord. And I saw the building collapse right in front of my eyes. I dropped down to my knees and I prayed, Lord, take me right now. Let him survive. It was just a feeling I can't explain. It's so cold and so empty not to have anything, you know, not to have anything. Wells' buddies divided up the, all the hospitals in the city, and they literally went room by room, bed by bed, looking for Wells. And there was not a lot of sleep and a lot of anxiety. And after about two or three days, we realized that we weren't going to be hearing from him. So I was sitting at my desk through the night calling. I never, I didn't sleep because I was calling hospitals since that was the only time you could get through in, you know, the middle of the night. And I got up, it was three in the morning, I got up to stretch my legs and I'm walking around over there and suddenly I sensed Wells, a big energy field off to the right of me, but it was a connection and I knew it was Wells. And I said, Wells, if you can do that, I know you're okay. And then I stopped looking. It's not that I gave up hope, it's just that the reality was made clear to me that he was gone, but he was still with us in a spiritual way. Tuesday, March 19th, my cell phone's ringing, and it's our housekeeper who was here at the house calling saying, Mrs. Crowther, the police are at the door. So I take the call and the police officer said, uh, are you driving, Mrs. Crowther, are you driving? I said, no, I'm here. I, I said, what, do I need to sit down or something? He said, you might want to. He said, um, your son's been recovered. Sorry. So um, that's when we found out. When we first moved to this community, uh, my husband had been interested in joining volunteer services. He joined Empire Hook and Ladder Company. There'd be an alarm go off, and Wells would watch his father go off to fight the fires. As soon as my brother was old enough, he joined as well. And you really got to see how difficult being a firefighter was. He took to it very, very easily and he was, he was good at it. And um, you know, I, could, I just felt that he had the right stuff you know, to be a firefighter. He was 17 when he became a, a, a full-fledged fireman, so to speak. So he could go in on an initial attack team and he could be inside before the fire was under control. He could hear my pager go off upstairs in my room, so by the time I came down the stairs ready to go out into the garage, he was standing there ready to go, his clothes on. I said, come on, Dad, hurry up. <laughs> he said, Dad, I want to change my career. That's how he started it. And I said, what? Yeah, he said, Dad, I think I want to join the New York City Fire Department. I said, well, starting pay for a firefighter is $27,000 a year. He said, Dad, money's not everything. My life was meant for something much more important. 
Of course, at the time, I didn't realize how prophetic those words were to be. Memorial Weekend of 2002 came around. The New York Times came out with this big article, Fighting to Live as the Towers Died. And there was a section that said uh, 902 in the South Tower, 78th floor sky lobby. So I read the section and that's where I saw the references to the red handkerchief and the reference to the red bandana. And he was calling out triage commands. There are people here you can help. There are people here you cannot help. Only help those you can help and get up and come with me now. Follow me, I know the way. All these things were quoted in the article. And I thought, oh my God, Wells, there you are. I found you. And then I reached out to the women that uh, were mentioned, Judy Ween and Ling Young. And so I sent photographs to both Judy and to Ling. And they both responded right away saying, that's the man. That's the man who saved my life. And no greater love hath one than to lay down his life for his fellow man or woman in this case. And he didn't hesitate. He knew what he had to do. You know, he was sitting at his desk and then figuratively speaking, took off his equities trader hat, picked up his firefighter's helmet, popped on his head and he went to work. And we know that in his heart of hearts, he was doing what he truly wanted to be doing, which was behaving as a firefighter should. So it was really pretty amazing stuff for us. In those awful moments, after the South Tower was hit, some of the injured huddled in the wreckage of the 78th floor. The fires were spreading. The air was filled with smoke. And then there came a voice, clear, calm, saying he had found the stairs. A young man in his 20s, strong, emerged from the smoke and over his nose and his mouth, he wore a red handkerchief. He led those survivors down the stairs to safety and carried a woman on his shoulders down 17 flights. And then he went back back up all those flights, then back down again, bringing more wounded to safety. Until that moment when the tower fell. They didn't know his name. They didn't know where he came from. But they knew their lives had been saved by the man in the red bandana. Boston College has been an amazing, they have so embraced Wells' story. It really represents, in a beautiful way, Boston College's mission to be a man or a woman for others. I heard of the whole story behind the red bandana kind of early on when I got here. And I'd really, you know, become quite familiar with the story and, you know, really captivated by it. There's no doubt that he will always be a BC guy, that he will always be one of the greatest uh, alumni from this school has ever produced. The fact that he was that heroic and he was that selfless, and that, that is the true definition of a hero. When we started to promote the, the Wells Crowther connection with Boston College Athletics and started to give out red bandanas, um, I think it was around the 10th anniversary of 9-11, I was amazed at how much that reception hit home with people. You could see that impact. When we talked to the football program and we shared the, the story with Coach Adazio, I think he really saw that it was uh, one of the great reflections of our, our university and it was one of those stories that we wanted to continue to support. So we thought about different ways we could do that and um, we thought coming out with the accents on the helmet, the gloves and the cleats uh, would be something that would be really, really cool. Big uniform things and all that doesn't drive our program, but the ability to represent Wells Crowther and his family uh, with the red bandana tie-in meant everything. And Under Armour, of course, did an unbelievable job helping us put all that together, but uh, that had real meaning. 
I know the guys are stoked about the shoes, the red bandana shoes. They're cool because they're one of a kind and they're also cool because what they represent. Oh, I thought it was amazing the way they added the red bandana to the uniforms and the coaches' jackets on the sideline and everything. Um, it really meant so much to us. And I thought it looked great. They should wear the red bandana every game. <laughs> there was a lot of emotion as we got ready to play USC and our guys were, were just, you know, captivated by Wells. You know, our team was really, really proud to honor him, to honor his family. It was an electric atmosphere night, a nationally televised broadcast game against a marquee opponent. It just had a lot of impact, uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of charge, a lot of energy. It was a perfect storm that whole night. It was just, we felt coming into the game, I think people around the program felt really good about it. Three hours before the game, there's a buzz. They wanted to watch that game because they, they sensed that something special was going to happen. We all did. The spirit, the, the, the power that was in that bowl, it was just incredible. And the students were all there with their bandanas cheering them on, they had them around their heads. When we went out into the field to be introduced, I was waving the red bandana. The entire stadium chanted USA, USA. It wasn't DC, it was all just one. It was really beautiful. You're standing out on that field and everybody's cheering and you know for whom they're cheering. It takes your breath away. And you know that they know all about Wells and that's what's important to me. That whole game we played with unbelievable energy. We were physical, we were tough, we were relentless. It's tough for a visiting team to come into an emotionally charged football team in their home field and come all the way across the country and play that game. That's not easy to do. We went out to USC the year before and we, we, we lost um, pretty miserably out there. And then putting on top of that, us wanting to beat them and then with the Wells Crowler, it was it's kind of like the extra push. Now in a sweep, it's Austin with a lot of room. Austin past the 50, near side 40, 35, 30, towards the end zone. Austin, touchdown, touchdown, Boston College. Take a bow, Sherman Austin. Huge play. The Sherman Austin reverse was absolutely enormous, and that was clearly a launching point for Boston College. Rushes on, Kessler gets dropped at the 30. A ferocious sack. Outstanding defense all night by Boston College. Murphy, the keeper, past the 35 to the 40, 45, 50, could go! Get out of your horse! See you later! See you later, Tyler Murphy! Touchdown, Boston College! 66 yards and an exclamation point to the ninth rate Trojans. Those are the moments that you dream about because it was just a crescendo. The place was rocking. Every emotion you had, just the fact that they were waving the bandanas in the air were just, it was, it was an incredible moment. We're, we're just football players and the best we can do to honor him is to win a game for him. So even though it's a small token of, of our gratitude, that, that's the best we can do and that's what we wanted to do. Well, you know, there was so much emotion at the end of the game. Our fans stormed the field. I mean, I've been involved in some pretty big time college football atmospheres, two national championships, conference championships, great moments. But I would tell you that that was uh, one of the most special moments in my career. The next game bowl I want to give out is to some people that son, Wells Crowther, we celebrated this game because we celebrated Wells. To be able in the locker room afterwards to present the uh, game ball to Wells' parents, well, I mean, it was very emotional. I mean, we touched them, they touched us. And I want you to know on behalf of this football team that we're honored to honor Wells, and he'll always be <laughs> something so important to this university. This game ball is for you. It was just really 
really so beautiful, so respectful of us and of Wells and his memory. And to receive that game ball, it was like, uh, it was just breathtaking. For you guys to present this to us tonight is, is incredible. We read all the stories, we heard all the news, and I said, yeah, but they haven't played the game yet. And this is great, what you produced tonight was terrific. I, I love it. <laughs> Next thing you know, one of the young men came up and handed handed him his pair of shoes. He said, "Here, these are for you." So, um, so yeah, it just blows my mind. I think it was very significant for my parents to get the game ball and be able to address the team. They, they lost Wells on September 11th, but knowing how important Wells is to so many people, there, there just aren't words to how um, fantastic that is for my parents. It just keeps Wells alive. I get a, a really warm feeling in my heart. His spirit is still down here. So I always know I'm close to him when I'm here. I always come and I look up and see him running through the smoke and the chaos and saving lives. And then I just live with the spirit. It's like, hi, mom, you know, here I am. was an American hero. And here was a great opportunity to see firsthand with someone the ultimate sacrifice that they were willing to pay for others. And I think that that's a lesson that is, is tremendous for all of us and certainly for our players. When Boston College thinks of what they want their students to be, Wells Crowther is the guy. It's the ultimate sacrifice, service unto others, and Wells defined that. If you'd like to support the Crowthers in their effort to keep Wells' story alive, you can do so. Simply visit CrowtherTrust.org. The work they've been able to do since Wells' death is substantial and includes numerous scholarships, an annual 5K race at BC, and even an academic curriculum aimed at teaching the traits central to Wells' brave actions.